and I'm Freddy Krueger. So I was drafted, drafted mm -hmm. in August, August the 21st of 1967. I was, a, well, I was a rank, first rank was Private E2. Rank when I got out, when I was in basic training, I was just, just Private E2. AIT, I was just, just a PFC, which is Private First Class. And then, then you work, then you work your way up from private on up, as as the years go by. I was specialist fourth class. S same thing as Bowdy. Mm. Spec five is 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 considered a, a sergeant, but I wasn't a sergeant. I was just spec four. When did I leave? January of sixty nine. No, no, you mean to leave the service? I, I left the service in uh, May of uh, 69 from Fort, Fort Riley, Kansas. First first day in service? Yes, I do. First day I got in there, when I got in, I got I got a haircut that was cut my hair completely down to nothing. And then I had to go get all my clothes and all that stuff because they had to be starched and all that stuff. And, it was, it was, it wasn't, it was bad. It wasn't nothing nerve-wracking. It was just, couldn't eat, you couldn't eat no candy bars or, or nothing like that. Because they didn't want you to gain no weight. Basic training, you got up about, uh, oh, you got up about 5 o'clock. You got out and done, done PT, PT. Which is exercise and all that stuff. And then you went out to most generally you went out to the rifle range to to uh, fire your weapon. From there you came back in about child for for uh, lunch at the mess hall, and then you done some more exercises and, and, and things like that. Okay. I seen I seen combat when I was in Vietnam. I did not see no combat. I was I drove a deuce and a half, which is a two ton uh, cargo truck, hauling supplies for my company back back at where I was stationed at in Fort in Vietnam. That was the first six months. Second six months I drove for a second lieutenant. Most memorable moments. Um, most memorable moments was when we took. I took a. a lead, I was the lead jeep of a, of a thirty five tractor trailer trucks with uh, bulldozers and Roman plows on them, and we took them up through through um, up towards Laos and Cambodia. And it was it was we had we had two gunships, two tankers, in in the convoy with us, and we lost one sergeant out of the deal. He got he got killed. Charlie Charlie decided he wanted to see how how the hand grenades worked, and he threw a hand grenade down off of a hill and rolled underneath the truck and and uh, went off and shrapnel came up behind his head. Other than that, that's basically about all the combat I've seen. It was, it was, I was pretty well lucky to not see a whole lot of combat. Average day, most generally I was doing hauling supplies. We, uh, the company I was in was 83rd Engineers, and we would repair, we would repair, a, a, say a culvert got blown out, and Charlie, we at Con would blow, blow the culverts out, and then we would go back and, and redo them, and we'd have to go around the around the deal to make make the work on the road and stuff like that. And then after after that, we was just go back in to until we had something else to work on. Could stay in touch with my mom mom and dad. We just wrote wrote letters back and forth, and I had the, my mother and dad sent me the paper. I got the paper every. It was probably usually a week week late 
but I still kind of kept up all the news back back home. You know. Oh yeah, I mean, we had we had some friends, and, and but I haven't I haven't seen none of them since I was out of service. I guess I ain't done that guy in service. It was regular 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 food. It was oh like we have chicken or hamburgers or stuff like that. Mess all mess all these and fix them up. It wasn't a, it wasn't it was one great big building in in Vietnam. It was this one great big building. We had this cots set up. I mean, just a regular single bed set up, and then we had a had a foot locker at the end of it, and that's what we kept all of our uh, personal stuff in. Then we had another locker for our uniforms and stuff that, that went in, and then then we would we we would had a most generally we had the mosquitoes and stuff was so bad over there we had to have a, a what they call a, a screen net that goes over you. And then we go over you and you can just zip it shut and, and try to hope to keep the mosquitoes out from keep getting you um, malaria, which was a pretty pretty painful stuff to to get. Yeah. How, how, what did we do at night? Being if down. we wasn't if we wasn't listening to the radio or, or or something like that, we usually was playing cards or or, or going over to the club to have a beer or soda pop or something like that at night. They were they were pretty 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 good glad to see me. I had to adjust to the speed speed limit over there was fifty five mile an hour and I had to adjust back to driving normal speed over back here in Mexico in town. Where did I go? I went from from Mexico down to Saint Saint Louis to Jefferson Barracks. I was mustered in at Je Jefferson Barracks, and then I was bused from. Jefferson Barracks down to Fort Leonard Wood. That's where I, where I got into basic training. Put basic training at. I spent six weeks at basic, no eight weeks of basic training. Then I spent eight weeks of, of AIT, which is advanced training facilities. You do basically what you are trained to do, like drive a truck or, or build bridges or, or things like that. Then you, then from there, when you graduate, then you mo most generally get your orders to go someplace. Like, like I went, I went from from Fort Leonard to to Vietnam. When I came out of Vietnam, when I came out of Vietnam in January of '69, I was I came to Fort Riley, Kansas, where I where I was teed in, uh, into the 84th Engineers. Which was kind of the same thing that we was doing out in Fort uh, over in Vietnam, but we wasn't we wasn't building no bridges or anything like that. We was basically transporting um, the big red one or the or the um, the big red ones from from back from they were coming back from Vietnam and they were landing in 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 the um, Airport at uh, Topeka, Topeka, Kansas, and so we was we was going to to P, to P, to P, to P, Kansas, and and they were they would load our, load our trucks, which was ten ton tractor trailer truck, and load the duffel bags and and just like two pallets of duffel bags on our tra transport delivery. Then we would take it back to back to their company and where they were stationed at. They were they were an infantry infantry group, which was which was they they seen more action than actually we did because they were actually out in the jungle all, pretty near all the time. I think they still should have the draft, which they they don't have no more. But I think I think every every man and woman should serve the country. Some way or the other, and I don't mean I don't mean you, you don't have to go to you don't have to go to war or anything like that. I mean you, you can do civilian life in into it and, and get you, get your credit for it and all all that stuff. You know you can learn to drive a bulldozer, or you can learn to drive a decent half, or you can learn to drive a track truck. Two two years or three years, whatever ever whatever you want to. 
in, in joint. If you want to join four years, you can go join for, for four, or you can keep on going till you, till you get old enough to retire, and then then when you get twenty four, say twenty four years in, you got you're young enough that you can still go back and get 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 a halfway decent job, what you're working at in in, in civilian life. I mean, in, in the military life, and and you still can get a, a pension from the service, and then you get a pension from your regular job when you retire on it too. But you don't have you don't have to stay in twenty years or, or whatever you want to. I mean, just, just regardless, whatever you whatever you up, up feel up comfortable being. Just year. Mm-hmm. Year. I didn't know what I didn't know what to expect when I was when I walked in walked in on the ground over in Vietnam. After I was there a little bit, it was I was scared at all all times. I had I had my I had my weapon with me all at all times. Yes, but if they shot back at me, I was going to shoot back at them. Most generally, it was all most generally it was was comfortable. But she was always on. You was always on. Had your mind set that there was might be somebody out there watching you. Like we, where my company was at, we had a we had a ammo so ammo supply dump right across the road from us. And we we was working on on the roads going up through the pass. And and we could set. We could sit in the truck or in the Jeep or in the, the equipment that we was running. If we had a pair of binoculars, the hills over on, on the other side of, on, well, it was kind of a, a, a valley. And it, it, it showed that you could see, you could see tunnels in this, in the, in the, in the hills. And the Viet Cong would, 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 Hold underneath the road, go into our supply dump, which is ammo supply dump, steal our mortars, go back over and set them up and, and shoot them at, shoot the mortars at us. It happened on on December of '68 in in my in my company area, and it, this was at this was at midnight, and I could actually read the paper. From the from the far from the mortars that was shooting off, and it was it was it was totally it was totally dark, but I could still read the paper from from the mortars that was was going off. I was the only one time done. Mine wasn't too bad, but there has there's been s- several guys that I know have came back, which you, is called a post strendum that you 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 just don't you just want to block. Lock everything out of your mind from from Vietnam. You don't you don't even want to talk about it. It's post syndrome. And it's it's depending on depending on what kind of job they did. If like the, there was there were guys over there called uh, jungle rats, you know, tunnel rats, tunnel rats. What they did, and they went in the, they went in these tunnels and would would actually force a Viet Cong out of the tunnels, and and the tunnels was was narrow enough that you had to be pretty, pretty thin person to get inside of them. But I never did, I never did see them. But I had, I know one guy that, that lives in Mexico where I do. He, he, uh, he, he don't even want to talk about it. And then finally, and that was in he was over there in. He might have been over there before I was, but he has finally started started talking about it. And and you know he just. Just didn't want. Just didn't want. When he when he thought about it, he would he would just tear up and he, and he wouldn't wouldn't say nothing. So it's 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 some of the, sometimes you just the people that go over there just just don't don't want to talk. Did did, did 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 we accomplish anything over there? We did not accomplish nothing. It was more political war than anything else. It was kind of it was kind of worse. But the, but after after I was over a while, I kind of realized that we was, you know, fighting something that we 
did not have no control over. It was the, the South and North Viet, Viet, Vietnamese was fighting over communi communism, and they were doing it long before we even stepped foot over there. We stepped foot over there in 60, well, I was over in 68, and they were, I think they were the first of them over in as some as early as 62 or 63. And they were doing, they were fighting this communism started back in 1950. So it was, it was a pretty long drawn out affair between the North and South Vietnamese countries, two countries. Age group? Mm -hmm. I would say we was all in the early 20s, probably 22 through, 22 through maybe 25 or 26, 27. Sergeant, sergeants was basically about maybe in the early 30s, maybe late 30s. And then in one night I was, one night, I, I'll tell the story, one night I was sitting around the bar barracks and my, my lieutenant that, that I was driving it for asked me, he said, Freddie, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm not doing nothing. I said, why, what do you got? He said, I got a court martial down at, down at Quinn Yard, which was my, where my battalion was at. And, and I said, do you, do you need me to go with you? He said, yeah, I need, to, I need a driver because I, so I go down, and, 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 which was about probably, oh, it's probably 20 miles. No, it wasn't 20 miles. About maybe 15 miles from, from, our, com from our, our company area. And and uh, the after the after oh probably seven o'clock, the roads was actually closed. If you if you was on if you was driving you you better have your weapon handy and close by for you to get get some fire at because we got we got fired on but it wasn't they didn't hit us. And the captain behind us told us to slow our jeep down to get three intervals. And my, my lieutenant told me, Freddie, forget what he said. We're going to the company area. I said, okay. He got, he got, the orderly this, he got chewed out because he was not following orders from a higher up officer. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get nothing because I was following orders from from, from the from my lieutenant, so it's it's basically it's basically kind of kind of kind of have to follow orders and, and things like like that in, in your working orders. What's the hardest? Pass if you get asked. If I shot anybody, and I did not. I was out, I was out in the field. And the shock came in, and I could feel the shock wave hit me in the back. But it it didn't. There were no rounds or nothing. But it, it scared me then. I I hit the ground and was ready to far back. But I I, I never did see anybody out there. But I, I that was the, that was the scariest part. 